Hi, my name is Dylan Kearns, and I'm going to show you a library called Elm TypeScript Interop. So the purpose of Elm TypeScript Interop is to give you the kind of type safety that Elm provides you in the connection between Elm and the JavaScript world. So um, I've got this Elm TypeScript starter project here that kind of gets you going with Webpack and Elm TypeScript Interop. So that's what I've got cloned here. And um, so let's start with um, an example in more vanilla JavaScript without the safety of Elm TypeScript interop. We've got some data in JavaScript. Let's say we got it from some library, and we'd like to pass it in to our Elm application. I'm just going to need to change my program to a program with flags here and change some type signatures. Okay, so now the problem with this is that you have no guarantee that the types that you're passing through are compatible. So what you end up with is runtime errors like this. It's so expecting an int but instead got this object. So this is one of the pain points of, of working with Elm and JavaScript uh, is that you can get runtime exceptions, which we try to avoid with Elm. The recommended approach is to use decoders so that you can gracefully handle those unexpected values using a result type. Um, and that's, that's a good approach if you're using regular JavaScript. Using this library, Elm TypeScript Interop, you can have the same guarantees so that you don't need a, a decoder to guarantee safety. So I'm going to run Elm TypeScript Interop, and that's generated this TypeScript definition file for me. So now, if I go over to my TypeScript file that's passing in the flags to my Elm code, uh, we actually get a type error here that says this object counter with a number is not assignable to a parameter of type number because it is actually parsing out uh, the type of my flags here and it sees that it's an int and it sees that the data I'm passing here is incompatible because it, it knows the type of this data. So, uh, I'm going to grab the counter off of there. You can see it compiles here, and since it compiles, just like we are used to with our Elm code, it compiles so it works. Um, and so, uh, that's how flags work with Elm TypeScript Interop. So next I'm going to show you how ports work with Elm TypeScript Interop. So, uh, what we do with ports, uh, so let's say that we've got um, we want to use some library. So to keep it simple, I'm just going to do a, an alert from JavaScript, which we can't do natively from Elm. So I'm going to create a port for that called um, alert. And uh, so I just pass in a string, and that gives me a command. And uh, let's create a button to, uh, to make this happen. So now I can run Elm TypeScript Interop and I can actually get intelligent code completion here. So app.ports, and this is really helpful because I often forget the syntax for this or get it wrong and then I get a runtime exception. Um, so I subscribe and it's saying, hey, you need to give me a callback function. So uh, callback function and we've got a message and if I inspect this you can actually see that the message parameter is a string so it's aware of that so I can just do an alert here with this message since it knows that it's a string and um, let's change the message name on our button So there we go. So that's all wired up safely. 
So now let's try a more complex data type. Um, so just to demonstrate that, um, let's do an alert with a more complex name. So let's say we've got uh, a first and a last. We've got this record that we're going to send out. So now when I handle this port, oh, if I remember to regenerate my type definitions, now when I run, now when I subscribe to this port, again, it's type aware, so if I look at name, it's actually aware that it's an object that has first and last as strings. So I'll just do another alert on this except uh, I'm actually going to take out these pieces of the name here so and there we go it's as easy as that so the bottom line here is that you don't need to use decoders to get safety in your interop between the JavaScript world and the Elm world. Uh, you actually are, are better off and more safe using, uh, using the actual types instead of a generic JSON encode value, JSON decode values, and letting this library, Elm TypeScript interop, help guarantee that the types you're using line up between your TypeScript code and your Elm code. So the one caveat that I'll mention is that um, if you're using an any type, then you kind of break that contract. So for example, if I were to annotate initial data with this any type, um, notice that it, it no longer gives me um, a compiler error, which it does if I, if I don't force that any type, if it, if it actually infers the type here. So, just keep in mind that if you're using any types, you do not get that guarantee of the types lining up. So that's one thing to look out for. So just be sure, um, in the case that you, you're not sure what the type is going to be, if you're decoding some value from the server or that type of thing, then you do still want to use decoders. Um, and in your tsconfig file, you can use a strict flag set that to true and that's going to do um, several options including no implicit any which will help catch um, preventing you from from using unnecessary any types hope you enjoy the library and thanks for watching